Somebody call a doctor because bad medicine is back. back. Over there's Diamond Dave Damone. This is the Appleton Oak. That's the answer. I'm Mason Quinn. Folks, today we are taking a look at Chernobyl. This is season one, episode two, and the first one was an absolute banger. So I cannot wait to dive more into this story. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah, we got to see what kind of happened at what, 1 45 in the morning. So I'm ready, willing, and able to continue with this story because that's powerful so far. Yeah, this is a second watch for me, but as I said before, in a completely different environment, no phones going off, no dogs barking, so I'm picking up a lot, I think, that I missed the first time around, which was about five years ago, so I'm really, ex well, not excited, I'm intrigued, I'm looking forward to watching, we'll just say that. Chilling, impactful for the first one, really looking forward to what Craig Mazin and crew have in store for us in this one. Let's go! <laughs> крестами их русских могил. По русским обычаям, по русски рубаху рванув на груди. Really dig the timelines they're giving us in this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I like how they're updating that. Поверив, что жизнь уже вся. Минск, this is where um, a girl that I had uh, talked about doing some interview work with, this is where her parents were from. Where is everyone? Oh, they refused to come in. Why did you come in? Oh, it's too hot. That's the uh, the guy from House of the Dragon, I think the uh, the foot guy. Oh, <laughs> oh, no way! What? Do you have alarms? Or they sure do. I ain't never run from leak. Oh, it would have gone off before. It's coming from outside. The Americans. Oh. Wow. No, oh, she took a sample. Eight all the way there. Well, that's the that's the city, right? That I was going towards at the end of the first episode, right? Uh, yeah, a big city. I think so. Yeah. Either way, that that wind carrying it yeah, too. Well, yeah, yeah, fallout. But I'm just saying that holy crap, it's at eight already there. We'd be seeing other isotopes. Nuclear test? Uh new kind of bomb. We'd have heard that's what half our people work on here. Something with a space program, like a satellite, or no one's answering the phone. All the phone lines were cut, right? Yeah. No mis no misinformation can get out. Yep. Get everyone started on an IV. We don't have enough. All the children, then. But we don't have enough. As many as you can. Where's the old man? He set up a burn world in 16. Oh. oh, man. What are you doing? What is that? Milk. It's milk. Much no. better than water. No, 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 stop, stop. What are you doing? These are radiation burns. Their clothes are contaminated. Yeah. yeah. Is she touching them? Yeah, they're grabbing everything. Oh, they're gonna get contaminated too. Yep. You was a firefighter from Chernobyl. Well, even just breathing around, yeah, you're still getting contaminated. Yep. But still. This is not gonna go well. Oh no. I can't believe they're just grabbing them. Oh. Did we get confirmation that his uh, wife girlfriend was pregnant yet? Or are we well, still I speculating? Think the throwing up was morning sickness. That uh, that's, oh, look at her oh, hands look. already. Yep, just from grabbing the boot. I know some people said there was a lot of dramatization, but I wonder if that's part of the true yeah. facts. Yeah, I, I did read a lot of the comments on YouTube said the series was heavily dramatized. Yeah, but but there, at the same time, there was those that said they did a really good job at some factual stuff yeah i mean it's too, so. it's gonna be tricky to get the real story out well, of that's, that's soviet it. russia I mean, at the time you, yeah how, how do people know exactly what happened they're finishing up some other business it'll be a few more minutes can i get you some tea oh i'm fine thank you would you care to read deputy chairman shabina's report while you're waiting certainly thank you interesting they, they're speaking in english but they still did the report mm -hmm. in russia but is the report even going to have the truth in it? Not likely. Well, he knows. You know, the way he was talking on the phone and everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the look of panic. Well, even his eye twitching a little bit. Professor Legasov. It's like he saw a ghost. Yeah. 
of my son. He sold so much with his face in that, like, mm -hmm. 30 seconds. Thank you, Comrade General Secretary. I'm pleased to report that the situation in Chernobyl is stable. Uh, military and civilian Look patrol face. for the region, and Colonel General Piccolo, who commands troops specializing in chemical hazards, has been dispatched to the plant. In terms of radiation, Plant Director Brichano reports no more than 3.6 oh. Schrontgen. I'm told it's the equivalent of a chest X-ray, so if you're overdue for a checkup... And for impress? Totally unaware. KGB First Deputy Chairman Sharkov assures me that we have successfully protected our security interests. Very good. Well, it seems like it's well in hand, so... If there is nothing else, meeting a chance. Oh, that's it? It's well wow. in hand? Inside the core, if there's graphite on the ground outside, it means it wasn't a control system tank that exploded, it was the reactor core, it's open. Oh, Comrade Sherbina. Comrade General Secretary, I can assure you that Professor Legazvi is mistaken. Oh my uh, goodness. Uh. It's also the maximum reading on low limit decimeters. They gave us the number they had. I think the true number is much, much higher. If I'm right, this fireman was holding the equivalent of four million chest X-rays oh, in his hand. Oh my God. Now Chernobyl holds over three million grams and right now it is on fire. Winds will carry radioactive particles across the entire continent. <laughs> three million, billion, trillion bullets in the, in the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat. Most of these bullets will not stop firing for 100 years. I want you to go to Chernobyl. You take a look at the reactor, you personally, and you report directly back to me. Oh, my. Cool. And take Professor Legasso with you. Cover General Secretary, but I don't... Do you know how a nuclear reactor works? No. No. Well, then how will you know what you're looking at? Meeting adjourned. Oh, no. <laughs> so we saw this. I, I gotta be honest, I don't... Some of these details I don't remember, so now he's... He probably doesn't want to go. Yeah, well, he knows. That's yeah, he knows. Sentence. It, it was interesting how they they did paint Gorbachev in a pretty positive light there. Mm, you know, I ish. mean, he was working with the information that he was given. Then once he found this out, he sent them. I mean, I think as Americans, we generally have a pretty decent uh, view of Gorbachev. I think so. Yeah. Tell me how a nuclear reactor works, or I'll have one of these soldiers throw you out of the helicopter. Genius idea. Oh, I don't think he's kidding. He's probably not, but genius idea. Hmm. In RBMK reactors, we surround the fuel rods with graphite to moderate, slow down the neutron flux. I know how a nuclear reactor works. I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Yeah, just give me a high level, and yeah. I'll be good. Yeah. I'll be good. No, I know how they work. Mm. Brilliant. There's like tons of little, little details that matter to that highlight. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Oh no. Oh no. You want to get sick? Go. Please take her. Please take Please take Oh no. Oh. Oh no. That's radiation ionizing the air. Well, if we can't see, we don't know. Get us directly over the building. Oh my oh. god. Oh. Don't see your we'll be dead within a week. Dead. Get us over that building. Uh. Or I'll have you shot. Oh my god. This is crazy. Look at that glow. Yeah. Fly directly over that core. I promise you by tomorrow morning you'll be begging for that bullet. Doesn't like the fact that he's oh. wrong. Perhaps if you came back another day. We don't have a day. Mm. Uh, let me introduce I'm here at Chernobyl. Such a lovely time. Visit again soon. I will, thank you. World's shortest tie. <laughs> <laughs> A little levity, I guess. It was, it's the 80s. There has been an accident at Chernobyl, but I've been assured there is no problem. I'm telling you that there is. I prefer my opinion to yours. Oh, my. Oh. Stable iodine will keep your thyroid from absorbing radioactive iodine. Take one a day for as long as they last. And go east. Get as far from Minsk as you can. This is crazy. <sighs> Karloff showing off to make us look bad. Doesn't matter how it looks. Sabino is a pure bureaucrat, stupid as he is, pig-headed. We'll tell them the truth in the simplest terms possible. We'll be <clears throat> fine. We'll be fine. Save your own neck. Famous last words. We have begun our own inquiry into the cause of the accident, and I have a list of individuals who we believe are accountable. Huh. Oh, 
Just look at that go. Even then, they're too close, and he knows it. Mm -hmm. Tell me how an RBMK reactor core explodes. I'm not prepared to explain it at this time. As I presumed, there's no answer. It's disgraceful. Really. <sighs> to spread this information at a time like this. Unreal. Why did I see graphite on the roof? Graphite is only found in the core where it's used as a neutron flux moderator. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> our high range dosimeter just arrived. We could cover one of our trucks with lead shielding, mount the dosimeter on the front. I wanted to then get as close to the fire as you can. Give him every bit of protection you have, but understand that even with lead shielding, it may not be enough. Then I'll do it myself. Oh. oh <laughs> well, I mean, you can admire that, I guess. You know, he's not going to send yeah. one of his own men he's out there. not sending his own man to do, do it, it yeah. I mean, himself, but some, well, he's somebody working has off. some integrity. Yeah, so, there's something to be said some for that. Some integrity, yep. And then he's also probably working off the one gentleman that's not possible, right? These guys are yeah. set so he wants to uh, know. see and hear it for himself. Yeah, it's a good point. He wants to be right there, but oh, my God, even when he says even with the lead and then, yeah. God, the, oh, man. 400 kilometers away, they had got a reading of eight. Yeah. So, <laughs> is that duct tape? Uh, it was some kind of lead. Lead. Yeah. It's le uh, like. Sorry, from where I'm at, it looks yeah. like duct tape. Yeah, it does because it's only on like one half. Got his face in every shot. Mm -hmm. Just tells a story. Just total dread. I watch these two. Oh, that can't be right. Your your piece of equipment. Is it's a faulty you, faulty, faulty equipment, equipment again. Yep. That's what they said the last time. It, yep. it and they, was too they high. And the other the one, one. Yeah. fried the one, and the other one went to two fifty. Correct. Oh, decontamination probably yep. isn't going to be good enough. What would you? What could you do? To, yeah, to well, I mean, that is normally what they do. Oh, I know, but I'm like, what would work? Yeah. Unless it's pure iodine. It's not through the wrong can. It's 15,000. Oh, oh, my God. Oh. Fire we're watching with our own eyes is giving off nearly twice the radiation released by the bomb in Hiroshima. And that's every single hour, hour after hour. 20 hours since the explosion, so 40 bombs worth by now. Oh. 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 Who's in comrades Bukhan, I'm in Fahmin, to the local party headquarters. Thank you for your service. No oh, right. excuse. Married the Atlov was in charge. It was the Atlov! How do we put it out? Buran and sand. How much sand and buran? For yeah. God's sake, roughly. 5,000 tons. Oh. At least evacuate Pripyat. It's three kilometers away. That's my decision to make. But make it. I've been told not to. Is it or is it not your decision? I'm in charge here. This will go much easier if you talk to me about the things you do understand and not about the things you do not understand. <laughs> well, because he's got orders from above probably saying that. Yeah. Just imagine, like, your inability to accept responsibility and say, I messed up, put so many people in danger. Yeah, well, you can't because it's basically your life if you do. So everybody's just trying to pass the buck to save their own skin. And then find someone else to to blame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the first. Dietloff. Dietloff. Dietloff did it. He was in charge. I'd prefer one of those. Well, they were upside down. They couldn't catch whatever. Are you here because of the fire? Anything we should be worried about. <laughs> well, uh, how much time you got? Can you drive east as far as you can? Is that him trying not to create a panic? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Perhaps. It's well, I think he. I think he knows it, if people it, say he said something, and he's that too. Yep. Yeah, he's got to be. And smart it goes about back it. to the beginning of the first episode where he's doing the tapes and the guys outside watching him. Yep. yep. Look at him just showing the highlight of the wind. Yep. Oh, here they come, bringing sand. They cannot fly directly over the fire. A minimum of a ten meter perimeter. Ten meter perimeter. Lead one per pre-flight. Maintain minimum ten meter perimeter. Copy that. When to 10 small, meters. 10 meters, so 30 uh. feet. No, oh, no, no. They're too close. They can't get over the fire. How are they? The wind will have to carry it. Tell them they cannot go over the core. Lead one is too close. I repeat, they are too close. Oh, right boy. in it. 
Speed one, you were inside the perimeter. I did not copy this. Oh, he's in it. Oh, jeez. Yeah. What? Oh my goodness. They're gonna. Oh my god. He's that thing's gonna go down. What? Yep. Did the blade just come off? Yeah, because it, it, it hit, hit the, the cable, the cable on the on crane. Must have just knocked out the pilot. Send the next one in. Tell them to approach from the west. Wow. I mean, there's just, there's no way to get close enough. There's, there's nothing, no technology. I was actually calling about our friend. You know, the one in the country. Oh, yes, of course. I wanted to see how he's doing. It's so hot there right now. Yes, it's extremely hot. We got a talking code. Simka, who's 14, and little Boris, who's five. Well, that's wonderful. Oh, he's just telling them what they're using. Moron. Where are you going? Chernobyl. There are 50,000 people in this city. Professor Ilyin, who's also on the commission, says the radiation isn't high enough to evacuate. Ilyin isn't a physicist. Well, he's a medical doctor. If he says it's safe, it's safe. Not if they stay here. We're staying here. Yes, we are. And we'll be dead in five years. <laughs> I'm sorry. A dose of reality he wasn't ready for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's finally hitting him. A nuclear plant in Sweden has detected radiation. Oh, no. Identified it as a byproduct of our fuel. <sighs> The Americans took satellite photos. The whole world knows. Uh, uh, that's the least of your problems. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> Not letting children play outside. In Frankfurt. They're not letting kids play outside in Germ Germany. Germany. Radiation in Sweden. But right there. Man, we're good. They're busting the people out. Yep. Oh, Jesus. That's, That's a lot. Yeah, they got the Geiger counters on them. Just get your stuff and go. No time to pack, no nothing. Yep, just leave everything. Wait, they're putting people from the... Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, did I see that right? They're putting those people with the hospital people together? Yeah, well, even together? The, the contaminated people. Yeah, I mean, this doesn't look like it here, but when they were pulling them out of the hospital, it looked like that. What a shot. Just these two left. The guards arrested this woman at the South Checkpoint. I'd have put her in a cell. But he thought you should know that I know. I know that your reactor core is exposed. I know the graphite's on fire, the fuel is melting, and you're dropping sand and boron on it, which you probably thought was smart, but you've made a mistake. Chief physicist, Belarusian Institute for Nuclear Energy, and you're Valery Alexeyevich Legasov. Smothering the core will put the fire out, but the temperature will eventually increase. Believe it will melt me, down. I'm perfectly aware. I estimate at least a month before it melts through the lower concrete pad, which gives us time. No, you don't have a month. You have approximately two days. Oh. The fuel would take a month to reach the concrete pad here. First, it's going to burn through the biological shield here by Tuesday. And when it does, it's going to hit these tanks, bubbler pools, reservoirs. Reservoirs for the ECS. I understand your concern. Thanks, uh, nearly empty. No, they were nearly empty. Each of these points here, here, and here all drain to the bubbler pools. I'm guessing that every pipe in the building ruptured, and then there are those fire engines that I saw on the way in. Fire hoses are still connected. They've been gushing water into the structure this whole time. Tanks are full. Tanks are full. <laughs> oh. Well, that put a wrinkle in his plan. Our power comes from the perception of our power. Do you understand the damage this has done? Do you understand what's at stake? Boris? Professor Legasso will deliver our briefing. Well, he moved up quick, huh? Mm -hmm. 
Ulana Komyuk of the Belarusian Institute. Thanks to her insight, we are now aware that the tanks are, in fact, full of water. Yeah, why is that a problem, Professor? When the lava enters these tanks, it will instantly superheat and vaporize approximately 7,000 cubic meters of water, causing a significant thermal explosion. We estimate between two and four megatons. Everything within a 30 kilometer radius will be completely destroyed, including the three remaining reactors at Chernobyl. The entirety of the radioactive material in all of the cores will be ejected at force and dispersed by a massive shockwave. Approximately 200 kilometers and likely be fatal to the entire population of Kiev as well as a portion of Minsk. For much of the area, a nearly permanent disruption of the food and water supply, a steep increase in the rates of cancer and birth defects. I don't know how many deaths there will be, but many. For Belarusia and the Ukraine, impact means completely uninhabitable for a minimum of 100 years. There are more than 50 million people living in Belarusia and Ukraine. 60, yes. And how long before this happens? Approximately 48 to 72 hours. <laughs> oh, good Lord. We may have a solution. We can pump the water from the tanks. Unfortunately, the tanks are sealed shut by a sluice gate, and the gate can only be opened manually from within the duct system itself. So we need to find three plant workers who know the facility well enough to enter the basement here, find their way through all these ductways, get to the sluice gate valve here, and give us the access we need to pump out the tanks. Of course, we will need your permission. My permission for what? Uh, the water in these ducts. The level of radioactive contamination. They'll likely be dead in a week. We're asking for your permission to kill three men. Holy shit. Wow. Comrade Legasov. <clears throat> All victories inevitably come at a cost. Still food on the table. Mm -hmm. It's likely still like that today. The valve will be difficult to operate, so we'll need three men. We'll need to know the basement layout. And of course, any volunteers will be rewarded. A yearly stipend of 400 rubles. That's it? I don't know. My friend was a security guard that night, and uh, she's now dying. And we've all heard about the firemen. And now you want us to swim underneath a burning reactor. Do you even know how contaminated it is? I don't have an exact number. You don't need an exact number to know if it will kill us. But you can't even tell us that. Why should we do this? For what, 400 rubles? You gonna tell him? Yeah. You'll do it, because nobody else can. But if you don't, millions will die. If you tell me that's not enough, I won't believe you. I spit on the people who did this. And I caused the price I have to pay. I'm making my peace with it. Now you make yours. Go into that water. Because it must be done. On an ankle. Where's Pilov? Baranov. Wow, dude. Like, I wonder what's going through his head right there. Oh. You know? He's just looking out the window like we just... It's either this or millions of yeah, lives. Yeah, or I, millions. I yeah. Just knowing the sacrifice. Yeah. I mean, these guys... Between the, them and the three. The crazy thing is these guys know they're... They essentially know they're dead already. Yeah, yeah you know, it's a one-way ticket. Uh, and I'm not I'm talking about the guys that are going in. Everybody yeah, there. Everybody who's uh, there, yep. Yeah. Can't even just the level of fear. I mean, this is a tense mm. shot, dude. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they don't. Yeah, they don't know what kind of shape everything's in under the water. I suppose. 
God, it's giving me goosebumps just watching this. I don't remember any of this at all. I mean, when you watch at home, you take a phone call, you get up to go to the bathroom. I don't remember any of this. God, those meters are just getting louder. Look at thing is just pinned. I knew that was going to happen, though. Mm -hmm. Come on. What a way to introduce fear yeah. to the audience. You know what I mean? Yep. Oh. Oh, here comes the panic. Oh, there go their lights. Oh, it went underwater, didn't it? No, it's, I think it's from all the radiation. Yep. All the particles taking it out. Oh, oh wow. wow. Unbelievable. Yeah, I made sure I even like... Wow. All right, wow. I can't believe that was only the second episode of Chernobyl. It just feels like so much has happened. And it's, it's just a... I mean, it's a fascinating series on so many levels outside of... You know what we were just told in that in that last meeting about how far the radiation could spread how long places would be uninhabitable for the food and water supplies completely being poisoned and it's just it's amazing that that happened and i mean obviously we're living how we are now people are, are living there and so at the end of all this it, it's gonna work out i guess as best as it can is probably the word to say it but i mean i like i said i know it was a tiny bit about you know chernobyl and a little bit of the history there but uh, i had no idea that it was at that level and things were that close and it just shows the the desperation and, and how things were and once we were finally able to cut through all the bs and the proper people were sending the information up the ladder to get things handled it seemed like okay now we're kind of starting to get a handle on things but you know the bravery of of everybody involved and and we saw this you know recently with you know any number of natural disasters that may happen or man-made disasters there's always the story of you know the human bravery and the people who sacrifice to save others and that's just an incredible thing i mean i i don't know what what happens with these three gentlemen who went in there to uh get rid of the water um I don't know if they made it. I don't know if we're led to believe that they didn't because the lights went out and maybe the radiation was was higher than we thought. And I don't know if that's Are the end of like them. you saying like made it as in like uh, they made it, they got Yeah, like as in this isn't the end of them. When yeah. the lights went out and everything stopped and it was silence, I don't know if that was to tell us I'm pretty sure that they, was the end of them. But. Okay. But either way, I mean, these guys, I mean, the, the level of bravery and the appreciation that they should have... Um, it's it would just be incredible um it's 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 fascinating to me that it's seen such a different level of government and and people and interaction than we're used to but it's very similar in that you know you see the people being evacuated and you see the people working in the hospital and yes we have the government officials that you know a lot of us didn't like uh, much at all in the first episode but when you're just seeing normal people like i'm not I'm not seeing them as Russians. I'm just seeing them as people and, and citizens who are in a terrible position. And man, when they were loading them on the buses and they, they you know, they were told that, you know, they couldn't bring the dog, no excessive, you know, baggage or anything like that. And just the buses just shuttling out of town. Uh, it was just an, in, an insanely powerful thing to see. And I'm so glad that this series is able to shed a light on this because uh, I think a lot of people know generally of the story, but not the specifics of it. And I just think it's a, it's an incredible thing that a lot of people should know about. Uh, yeah, like we saw that we're like still at the beginning. Nobody wanted to believe what was happening. Even Stellan Skarsgård character is like, it's still not happening. And then he's like, explain to me how this works, which I see with when he met the two the two nuclear power plant guys where they're like, no, it's impossible. And he's like, 
So that way he has a little bit of power and a little yeah, bit of knowledge. Yeah, so that Boris way, was able to cut otherwise the chase. Because otherwise he knows that. I think why he wanted that too is because then he knows those two couldn't try and BS him. Yeah, they couldn't buff him. And be like, no, that's not that. So then I love where he threw the line and like, may not know graphite, but I know concrete. And yeah. that is not concrete. Yep. Oh, and then they did the, the sum and the sum. How do you uh, say it? Decim decimeter? Deci uh, yeah, the decimeters, yeah. Decimeter. And it came back with 15,000. Now, like we said, we heard 3.5, and that was bad enough. And then he heard yeah, three, six, or 3.6, yeah. that, that was bad enough. Then he heard 250, and then he heard maxed out, then he heard 1,000. So when he got the final actual number of 15, and he was saying it was like, it was a Hiroshima every what? Every hour or every two hours or, yeah, something, like every, or something like Just that. Just amazing. But then... Like what I want to know about, you know, where they were they dramatized or whatever it was, did they were they able to actually evacuate the city that fast? Because it looked like it was very like easy going, like easy to yeah. get done, like logistically, it, logistically, yeah. like it really just it, everyone just came right out, came right out, got on the buses and got out of Dodge. I want to know if that was like if that was like historically accurate because that was. They did that in a nice, timely manner, but like you, like we saw with the powerful shots of the food on the table, their glasses, mm -hmm. laundry still up on the clothesline. So that was immense. And then I made sure I put these on at the end when the three guys were down in the in the water, just because I knew that was going to be an intense scene, which it was. Because like there's the music playing and just the breathing and kind of grunts of saying where they're going. And then when the one flashlight went out, I was like, oh, is the radioactivity really? messing with the batteries that also in the next light and then all of them went out and the way it just went to silence at the end that was wow like i like so i'm hoping they can get the job done we'll see i guess the next episode but this episode was it was really good just from beginning to end yeah i mean i assume they they did it right because yeah. the way they were describing it if they don't do something about that water in the next 48 72 yeah. hours it, a lot a lot more happens in in the worst possible way so i just assume they end up doing it but they left off with a very awesome cliffhanger right Unless there Unless they had to send in more guys we don't know that either i i mean i'll probably look up some stuff after this now because i'm, <laughs> oh, I'm very curious we'll see we'll see um but yeah this whole again they going off of the the show here they, they are giving us uh, at least me uh just such an again chilling intense uh f emotional feelings uh the way that you know, they started describing germany and all the other country uh the uh places saying hey we're we're shutting down we're getting this on our stuff and the way they discovered that uh with the basically in the beginning there dude opens the window yep <laughs> like half a second went by and the alarm went off and they're both they like it I don't know if she's real, uh, but if regardless if she is or isn't, like in there, her knowing what she knows was immediate. Like she took a sample, yep. did it through the machine, and came back with you know all the results. Um, just the the way they're delivering us information here is really uh, amazing on how they're doing it. It's it's almost like you're there in a way. I mean, and I don't mean to make that like in a in a weird way but it almost kind of feels like you're there yeah. the way that they're delivering this piece to us so craig mazin you you're nailing it so far two episodes in uh i'm curious to see what the fallout uh is continuing on because what they would we leave off on 30 hours or 32 hours in uh, is that what that last little title card was? Like that. Yeah. Either way, yeah. Uh, either way, it either way it's thirty. Last I saw, it was thirty hours after. Yeah. The initial it, song. It's, and then the way that they explained to us, uh, to us audience, like, hey, you know, at this rate, at fifteen, this is what's happening. So like yep. in two days, it's going to be this, yep. and you know, just hearing that, I don't think I'll never not be like, whoa, you know, you could still know it, and I feel like even no matter how many times it's delivered because of the impact that it carries it's just always just going to be kind of shocking so uh <laughs> i'm almost to the point now where i'm i'm kind of done looking forward to it <laughs> because the results here but i'm still looking forward to how they deliver everything but it's almost like man this is 
Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's so well done, Dave, and you you hit the nail on the head with feeling like you're there. I don't think that's something you apologize for because I haven't been well, sucked just, into a series like this, I don't yeah. think, ever that we've done. Yeah, and I, I, I want to, I'm you know. trying to, I tried tiptoeing around that. That was the best I could deliver in this moment because I know there's some real folks that have mm-hmm. been yeah. at least around yeah. it, right? So I, I'm not trying to say that. Yeah, but it, it's you know what I mean. So a quality of the program. Sorry, I'm losing my words here. And, and how well weather. it's done. <laughs> how well the show is done, Oak. Yeah, I mean, I I, I got to be honest. I don't remember like when we were watching the first episode. Like a lot of that clicked. Haven't watched it before. I don't remember a lot of this this particular episode. Um, and, and again, and I know I'm you know repeating myself here, but it's it's one of those things where. Like it's hitting me really hard, and it's like people be like, oh, well, you saw it before. And it's like, yeah, they're kind of at my house. The, you, know, you know how it is. There's jokes about, oh, I need, I need to find something to put on Netflix while I scroll through my phone. You know that sort of thing. Um, it's, it's, it's so powerful. It is, and it's, you know, Answer brought up a really good point that I hadn't thought about. Is, is uh, I'm curious about the evacuation because if you think now. Um, and, and I think in order to really understand this, you have to have uh, an understanding of how people were living. Yeah, the culture. You know, the culture and everything. I mean, they have the yeah. buildings with the numbers on them. And, uh, you know, you would think about a modern evacuation. You'd think if the military or police had to come in and say, look, put what you can in your car and leave. You know, every, everybody, but a lot of people now have cars or two cars or, or mm-hmm. whatever. And, you know, hey, fit what you can fit in your trunk or your back. No animals, animals, wherever. I mean, obviously with this, they had to go somewhere. We didn't know where they were going. And there's 50,000 people. Yeah, heading east. Like, hey, where, where are they going to go? I mean, is the question. But it is a very interesting point because it made it look like it was grab your stuff, get a bag. You've got two minutes to get out and go. Um, and you wonder, like, they didn't tell them get in your car and follow this escort. It was we're going to put you on bus. Yeah, they were stopping oh, cars yeah. and getting people off. Which over. was which is crazy to think about that. It wasn't get in your cars again. I have no idea how many people had cars. I don't pretend to know what the what things were like in the region. So that's a really interesting point that Answer brought up is the evacuation. Um, it's yeah, it, it's interesting that they they tried to keep it quiet. They tried to keep it a secret, and it's it's so wild to think about how the Cold War was. Yeah, they I mean, didn't want to show weakness. I mean, we're in like without getting too deep into things. Yes, we are in tumultuous time, tumultuous times now, just in general. But essentially, for for decades, there was always this tension whether there was going to be some, you know, nuclear war between the United States and Russia. Mm. I mean, people were building bunkers. I mean, legitimately, post-World War II, there's people in the States, people in Russia that built, you know, fallout shelters and bunkers and, and, and crazy stuff. I mean, it was it was real. And, and just the, the, the Cold War mindset of, like, this, you know, East versus West type thing was, was crazy. And instead of reaching out to other countries and saying, look, this happened, can we get help? Can we get the best minds in the world to come and try to figure out a solution, get people on the phone, get people working on this? I mean, if something crazy happened now, you'd think, you know, where you needed the top minds to help figure this out. It's like you're, you're going to go to every country. And yeah, yeah. Every, yeah, there's international aid and that and, sort of thing that always swoops put in. The best heads together yeah. across the globe, but they were like, no, we want to keep this quiet. And then they finally... You know, finally decided to you know do the right thing once the news was already out. And I think this you know this story, if 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 nothing else, for as much as this is a story about you know this historical happening and kind of learn from your mistakes, it's it seems like it's turning into very much a story about character, right? The, of mice and men type thing. You know, mm. the guys who uh, the, the the guys, and I don't want to say guys, the, the men and women who are. Uh, who are willing to put their own health and their own lives essentially at risk to do the right thing. The people who are willing to stand up and speak and the, the people who are passing the blame. I mean, how powerful is it that that woman drove to Sh- Chernobyl? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, she, guys, she fucking drove. I mean, you know, I know this isn't the type of program I normally swear on. She fucking mm-hmm. drove there. Like, you want to talk about somebody with character... With, and I don't know if that's dramatized, so I don't want to get like. Th- that's I don't know. That's, that's the hard thing person, about watching so. this. Is yeah. I don't know if she's a real person or if this is part of a story. But my God, if that's a real fucking person, that woman, 
or whoever th th that person was or anybody that was in that situation that said, you know what, I am going to go there because they need my help. Knowing, I mean, she knows. Yeah, the number of lives they you saved. You drive I mean, everything. She's telling the other woman, go east, go east, go as far east as you can. What does she do? She she drives there. You know, I'm curious too if uh, if she isn't real, were there true events of yeah, what, what, it, what, it, yeah. what inspired Imagine people it? People like yeah. saying like, you know, but going there, it's like it's like it's like the proverbial running into the burning building, or like the to, general to save other people. And what talk about? You know, well, you, you have the you general have, too. You have the the guys in the beginning. Oh, can't be whatever. And and we talked in the last wrap up about whether that was a science thing or not. It was interesting the comments because I think people were split in the comments too. Like if, like I said, if you know. <laughs> Told you that Plato melted spontaneously. But yeah. okay, you're, just, you're, you're mistaken. It can't happen. Um, but the general who was, you know, very dismissive at first, and you kind of, he was another character where you're kind of like, come on, not another one of these guys. Just taking consideration. Yeah. And then a little bit. Yeah. I feel like when he was told, I feel like when Alegasov told him he had, he's going to die within five years. That's when everything. Just snap yeah, like more. everything clicked, and then you know it was the the helicopter to, to see that helicopter crash because you, you, you think back to previously they wanted to fly right over. Yeah, he wanted to fly right over and look, and at that would have been them. That would have been had it. he not listened. And there's there's so much bravery, there's so much courage, there's so much. It, it's 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 hard to really comprehend. And again, that's why. It's like you don't want to overlend your feelings to something because you don't know how much has been dramatized. But I can't imagine, you know, given the gravity of the situation, that there wasn't people there who were displaying extreme acts mm -hmm. of bravery and people who were displaying extreme acts of cowardice and just mm -hmm. complete lack of moral character. And Mason Quinn brought it up earlier, and I'm not sure it's going to make the cut. Um, but it's it's the old Fred Rogers, um, Mr. Rogers. I know I'm, I'm aging myself here a little bit, but um, you know, very famous quote the saying when he was young and bad things would happen, his mom would say, <clears throat> God, I, think I get choked up even saying this quote. His mom would say, look for the helpers. And I've repeated that that quote multiple times. It's, it's every time we have something bad happen, I think we repeat that because it's a reminder of regardless of how bad things get, there is a level of humanity and it's like, it was really powerful when actually when you said like i did i'm not looking at this as russia i'm just looking at this as people because it's it's so easy you think chernobyl the 80s russia america and it's like no nah, these were people working in a hospital that were just brave as hell these were people whose family members had hurt and sick and it, it wasn't russians it wasn't people from the it was just just people and you take the 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 diplomatic shit and you put it aside and there was just so many brave people and and so many people who were just putting themselves at risk to help others and i don't care how much the show is dramatized you, you know that there was people over there doing that and and that was a really powerful reminder in this episode and, and again um just a, a wildly powerful show and and i look I, I understand very well that it's been dramatized but you still have to take a look at the big picture of what happened there at the times and you imagine um you imagine all the things that happen and the one big thing that i'm going to finish with is the interesting thing in the in the challenge i'm guessing for the directors and even i'm sure there's been countless books written is is there a real truth that's actually out there mm. how how much of what actually happened from the explosion at the plant to the initial meetings the down the line mm. how much of the actual truth has never been released and i think you could say that about a lot of things yeah. with government and disasters and things like that but an another incredible episode um very powerful and uh and that, that end scene uh, i don't know that i've seen a more powerful ending in any show um as diamond dave had said obviously we know that that last thing didn't happen but we i don't know the fate of those particular three individuals mm -hmm. and uh and, and i'm very uh, again, I, I don't want to use the word excited, but I'm anticipating watching the next show. Yeah, I mean, it's something like this is just, it's so good. You just, you want to see what's next. And, and I think maybe we should, you know, just take what they're giving us and 
and, and maybe you guys let us know in the comments, but I, I don't want to get too wrapped up in, oh, did that really happen or didn't it? And then I'm playing against in my mind of how should I, you know, feel or react because maybe this isn't a hundred percent true. Well, I, I kind of feel I like think that maybe with any we, true events. Right. Yeah, I think we events. should maybe just react to what's presented to us and just treat it as such if we want to go on later look up what really happened how you much see, of the story you see that with true. tv shows that yeah. say inspired by true right. events or based inspired on true events, so. based by you right. know what i think might be interesting dave and we'll have to sit down and have a meeting for this and this is normally something we would talk about off camera but you know what i think it would be interesting when we're done with this series being as powerful as it is to maybe just do a, a short ish although nothing is short if i have a microphone um short ish video on talking about things that happened in the show and maybe a comparison mm -hmm. against real events and i'm sure if you google like comparisons versus actual events how many people were real these sort of things are always on the internet yeah. after true stories so well, that might mind be too we we are planning on um at the end of each month this the month of january is going to be a little hard but well by the time this is out i think it's already going to be end of january uh but regardless uh we want to take at the end of each month to talk about what we reacted to during that month so most likely this i know for sure this is going to finish in february so oh, we could probably and just keep that in mind yeah, for the live stream I would, I would, yeah, yeah i would just love see to, just do a yeah. quick a few quick headers oh, yeah i would love to dive deeper yeah. into this and then yeah. compare it so, to what happened in real life in the live stream right. so another powerful episode we've got three more to go for this incredible story to be told so for diamond dave Appleton oak that's mason quinn i'm of course answer we'll catch you on the next one pals